So it's eternal, it was spoken, it was written down, it was copied. And number five, it was translated. Now this is, this is the most important point because a lot of people say, well, the King James Bible, it's in English. And if you have to translate something from another language, you're always going to lose meaning. And that's why we have to go back to the originals um, to get the true meaning of, of what God really wanted to tell us. Um, but does that line up with Scripture? Acts 2. The day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, if man translates something, can something be lost in the translation? Possibly. Just like if man spoke something, or if man wrote it down, or if man copied it. Um, but let me ask you, what if, what if God himself was doing the translating? We see here that at the day of Pentecost, when God gave them the gift of other languages, it wasn't them speaking. It says, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues, other languages, as the Spirit gave them utterance. So if God is the one doing the translating, why can't it be perfect? Isn't that a consistent position? Like if I was speaking to you in Chinese up here, and I had Jesus Christ himself standing here. You guys all had headsets on. And he was translating it to you in English. Do you think he would lose any of the meaning? I mean, a perfect translator could translate something perfectly and convey those words in that language as they should be conveyed. And I believe that's what we have in the English Bible. It is possible. If God does the translating, it doesn't need to lose any meaning. But let me show you a couple of verses in the Bible where we actually see translations in the Bible and they're inspired scripture. Um, verse uh, 40 of Acts 21. We see here Paul is uh, you know, taken by the centurion because the Jews want to kill him, right? And he asks if he can say a couple of things to the people. Verse 39, but Paul said, I'm a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city. And I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the peoples. So he's saying to the centurion, just, you know, I'm, I'm a Jew, I'm a citizen of this country. Let me say some things to these people, to the Jews, right? Because the Jews speak in Hebrew. Verse 40, and when he had given him license, so when the centurion allowed him to do that, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people, saying, you know, hush, hush. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying. And then it goes on in chapter 22, all the things that he said to the Hebrews. Now let me ask you this, what language was the New Testament written in? Greek. What language was Paul speaking? Hebrew. So e even if you emphasize the original scriptures, you see here that the original scriptures was a translation of what was actually spoken. So is it perfect? Well, if we believe it is, why do we have a problem with believing that a translation can't be perfect? There's a translation here, he's speaking in Hebrew, and it's translated to Greek to be written down. What's my position? My position is they're both perfect. You know, you don't lose any meaning. The Greek and the Hebrew are both perfect. Uh, Genesis 42. So if you're keeping up with the Bible reading, you would have read past this as well. I won't read it all for the sake of time, but... When we see here in uh, Genesis 42, verse 23, we know the story that his brethren came from uh, Canaan to Egypt to, to, do, to buy, uh, buy grain in the famine. And remember, Joseph hid himself from them. He pretended that he was an Egyptian. He spoke to them in, e e in the Egyptian language. And look at what it says here, verse 23. And they knew not that Joseph understood them because they were speaking Hebrew. So Joseph knew what they were saying because obviously he's an Israelite that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. Now, a couple of questions there is, Joseph was speaking Egyptian, but the Old Testament was written in what? Hebrew. And so, so the question is, what was, it, what was inspired? 
Was it what Joseph said in Egyptian? Was it what the translator said in Hebrew? Or was it what was written down in Hebrew? Was it originally written down in Hebrew? Or was it originally written down in, e in Egyptian and then translated over into Hebrew? Who knows, right? But you have this conundrum if you, don't, if you believe one over the other. But if we believe that, hey, God in his, his, his infinite knowledge and power was able to deliver his word, preserve it, have it written down, it doesn't matter which language it was in. Even if it's now it's in English, it's still the inspired word of God. Um, here's another example, Daniel. This is a letter written from King Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon. Ne Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations and languages that dwell in all the earth. Peace be multiplied unto you. So I guess the originals were Hebrew, right? That was collected in the Bible. But the original letter, what language was that written in? It was written here in every language. All, all people, all nations, all languages that dwell in all the earth. And just the last one I'll show you in uh, Jude. It says here in verse uh, 14, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, what language was he speaking? This is before the Tower of Babel. So what language was he speaking when he said these words? But we have Jude here writing them in Greek. So again we see a translation in the Word of God and we believe we can believe it's perfect because it's the Word of God why can't we believe that a translation can be perfect so what I'm trying to show you here is that the presupposition that a tr you always lose meaning in a translation is is false and it can be demonstrably shown to be false because God can translate and he speaks all languages and he can translate perfectly